Welcome to another chat from the LA Times newsroom. I'm consumer columnist David Lazarus. Well, if you've shopped at Target recently, and I know I have, boy, are you in trouble because the company has admitted that as many as 40 million credit and debit card numbers belonging to its customers may now be in the hands of hackers. In just a moment, we're going to tell you some tips that you need to know, so stay tuned for that. Also, if you'd like to participate in this conversation, especially if you have been or may have been affected by the security breach, you can contact us via Google Plus or on Twitter. Use the hashtag AskLATimes. Before we get into the news, you can use part of this. I want to bring in Ricardo Lopez. He is a business writer. You've been covering this today. So tell us what we need to know about the security breach. Absolutely. Well, Target today, as you mentioned, disclosed that this, this massive consumer data breach uh, that affected as many as 40 million customers. Uh, so this only this applies to anybody who steps foot within the U.S. store. Uh, so it's not just if you have a Target red card, which is their own uh, credit card. It's anybody who swiped within stores. If you bought something. If you bought something, right. With plastic. Right. Uh, it doesn't affect those who shopped online at Target.com uh, or, or other ways that way. But uh, Target said that it's working with law enforcement. It's hired a, a third-party forensic uh, firm to look into how this happened. They aren't offering very many details, but they are saying that if you shopped, you know, at their store beginning Black Friday, November 27th through December 15th, uh, then you should take a look at your bank statements, your credit card statements, and look for any fraudulent activity. Does it matter which Target outlet you shopped at? Uh, all the U.S. stores is, is, is what Target is saying. So all of that credit and debit card information is spilling into a central database, it sounds like, and these hackers got access to that database. It, it appears so that way. There's, 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 uh, you know, our reporting indicates, you know, that there's, uh, there's a variety of different ways. There, there are no clear answers at the moment. You know, and Target, like I said, is not, is not saying very much other than they're, they've, they are working with law enforcement and, and are looking into how this happened. In past security breaches like this, this sort of information has surfaced not too far down the road in places like Russia, Eastern Europe, mostly organized crime, trying to get its hands on it for fraud purposes. Right. There's a huge market. You know, when, when hackers steal this type of information, they can very quickly print off credit cards using the same information they, they skimmed off, uh, off consumers. Uh, and so experts say that you know, when, when they create these credit cards, they, they sell them and they sell them at a premium if they are able to validate that it's a working you know, account. All right, let's bring in now Scott Middick. He's a senior vice president at Experian. That's one of the big credit reporting companies that are out there. These are the guys who are essentially keeping tabs on your credit files. Scott also has a background in ID theft. Scott, thanks for joining us. Can you hear me, Scott? Okay, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. Scott, if you can hear me, chime in, please. I do Here we go, David. I'm back. Thank you. Okay, you are back. Okay, I thought your identity got stolen really quickly right there, <laughs> and we were out of business. All right, so let's say I shopped at Target, which I did. Let's say my credit card number is on the line, which it probably is. What should I do now? Well, as data breaches go, this one is neither the worst we've ever heard of nor the least uh, worrisome that we've ever heard of. It's right in the middle. What's been breached in most cases here, as we understand it right now, is your actual credit card number, your PIN number, and your CVV2 number, along with your name. And with this type of information, what a criminal can do is, as we just talked about, create a new credit card which can be used for purchases as well as ATM withdrawals. So the, the risk here is m limited to uh, the potential that someone's going to use your number over again to make a purchase or get your money. The good news is that your liabilities are limited. In almost every case, you'll be out of pocket, even if in the worst case scenario, zero dollars, you may have a little bit of a headache on your hands to fix the problem along the way. All right, what's the difference, though, if I use a credit card or a debit card? Is one safer than the other? They're both governed under a government regulation called Reg E. And uh, in these situations, it's 99% it's likely that if you are a legitimate victim of fraud, either with a debit card or a credit card, your financial institution is going to take care of you. They just don't want the bad press that would come around of them trying to nickel and dime you for the $50 liability that, that may technically exist. Now, a lot of people are probably wondering when something of this scale happens, all right, well, should I immediately run out and pay for credit monitoring? Should I even splurge as much as 25 bucks a month for something like LifeLock? What's your advice? 
Well, when it's this type of information, just your credit card information, the risk of that information being used to get new credit in your name, which is where the really dangerous and painful forms of identity theft arrive from, or someone filing income taxes in your name, or someone being arrested and using your name, I mean, these are the types of identity theft that we really worry about and where it's often worth the money to subscribe to a service like the one that Equifax offers. In this case, um, while it's good to check your credit report, it's good to put a fraud alert on your credit file just to be extra safe. Uh, I wouldn't suggest people overly panic or make investments of dollars that are not warranted given the kind of information that was lost in this particular case. All right, and if you're just joining us, we're talking about the massive credit card security breach involving Target. Uh, as many as 40 million credit and debit card numbers may have gone out into the hacker world, and God knows what will happen after that. We're speaking with a uh, senior vice president from Experian. We're also joined by Ricardo Lopez, who's one of our tech writers. Ricardo, I want to come back to you uh, via Twitter, and everyone can join us if you just use the hashtag AskLATimes. Justin asks, all right, so who gets held accountable for something like this? And that's a really hard question. It is. It is a. It is a hard question. There have been past instances, you know, where you know the feds have busted, you know, rings of of these identity thieves who 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 steal this information, you know. But that often, you know, like I said, requires you know a full scale investigation, and it can be tough to figure out who's behind it. So, you know, ideally, you you would hold the the folks who stole it accountable for it. But if the bad guys are all overseas, where we don't necessarily have jurisdiction in cases like this, mm -hmm. is there any track record of bringing them to account? Uh, there, there may be. I haven't heard of one. You know, because uh, the, in 2008, when there was a big, a big breach that involved uh, people at Barnes and Noble, and I believe it was TJ Maxx, uh, I think that ring was busted in New York. All right, Scott Mitick of Experian. In fact, with ID theft cases, there's a roughly two percent conviction rate. So if I was a hacker, I'd be thinking, you know what? This is a basically risk-free crime. It's a great crime if you're smart and uh, don't have a better and more legitimate way to make money. And we see that especially in, uh, out in countries outside of the United States where uh, with a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of hard work, you can reap enormous rewards relative to what you could be doing with a le legitimate job in your home country. And that's part of what drives the crime of identity theft without a doubt. Seems to me that a couple of things people should be doing right off the bat of something like this is, as you said, check your statements. That's very important because that's the first line of defense. That's where you're going to see any untoward activity. But also, it's a good opportunity to take advantage of the law, which allows you to get one free credit report per year from each of the big credit reporting companies like yours. If I go to annualcreditreport.com and then space these reports out over four months each, I can kind of look at my credit files throughout the year. You absolutely can. So that's a great way at very minimal expense, or no expense in fact, to be able to have a good idea of what's going on within your credit report. But you also have to remember there's a lot more that identity thieves can do that don't does not necessarily hit your credit report. And an example is someone making purchases using your credit card. Those types of balance changes are not easily and quickly reflected on, as something you can see on a credit report. Um, tax identity theft, medical identity theft, child identity theft, government document identity theft, the list kind of goes on and on. And, um, and the vigilance is, is, is demanded in this type of world in which we live. All right, Scott Middick is a Senior Vice President at Experian. Thank you very much for joining us, Scott. My pleasure. Thank you. So, Ricardo, tell us, where does the investigation go from here? Because it seems as though any time there's a big security breach like this, we get all the heavy breathing when it first comes out, and then we ne never hear about it again. Right. So, I mean, the investigation will likely focus on how it happens because that, at this point, is still unclear. So we're, we're trying to wait for more information and see, you know, to understand really how this happened. Uh, it'll, you know, obviously look at, try to pinpoint where, where the breach happened, who was behind it, uh, you know, because there's a lot of speculation about how this occurred. All right. Ricardo Lopez covers business for the LA Times. You can get more information not just on this target security breach, but also all the business headlines of the day by going to latimes.com business. I'm David Lazarus. Until next time, see you in the business section.